Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. You know, it's interesting when I look at the story of Sarah in the Bible, it's it's quite a long narrative. Then when I go to the Quran, she's not even mentioned by name. <laughs> Tell me what, what the reason would be for that. Well, the, uh, first of all, about the, the name in, in the Quran, very few persons are mentioned by name in the Quran. Okay. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, a story is told and, and you, you get the idea of who is being spoken about, but the person's name is not uh, mentioned. Um, because uh, the, the, the Quran's purpose is not to give us all of the details of the story. If the story is already known, uh, the Quran is just evoking that narrative into the minds of the listeners in order to bring out the lessons that the Quran wants to teach. But, but uh, more, more interesting is to know the story itself. And so Muslim commentators have gone to the Bible and uh, they have, they've gone to Jewish and Christian sources and they have uh, uh, dug up these stories mm -hmm. and, and, and incorporated those stories stories into the commentaries on the Quran. Mm -hmm. So how can we know if the stories fit the Quranic narrative then? Well, we um, we have to be circumspect in, in taking the story because some aspects of the story may not actually fit within the Quranic ethos and uh, some uh, some other aspects uh, would be uh, benign. They, mm -hmm. they just simply enhance, uh, they're even beneficial, they enhance the understanding of the Quranic text and, and, and what the Quran is trying to um, evoke in the minds of the listeners uh, initially uh, and also the lessons that are based on that uh, evoked image of the story. So tell me how Sarah is described in the Bible. So in, in the Bible, um, Abraham gets married to Sarah and uh, for a long time she couldn't have any children. Uh, so she uh, gave uh, Hagar to uh, be Abraham's, uh, Hagar was her handmaid uh, that uh, she gave to Abraham so that uh, she could have child through her handmaid. Um, this obviously speaks to an ancient custom that, uh, that doesn't seem um, familiar to our yes. um, present uh, <laughs> present day experience. Uh, so nonetheless, uh, uh, Hagar gives birth to Ishmael and uh, some 13 years uh, later, um, when Sarah is 90 years old, uh, this is when uh, God uh, uh, says to Sarah that she will have a child and uh, she is uh, surprised at this news. Uh, she even laughs at the suggestion because uh, given her age, she doesn't expect that this is going to happen and she finds it uh, somewhat funny. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, but nonetheless, uh, she um, does give birth uh, to Isaac, and um, by this time, Abraham is a hundred years old. Mm. Uh, eventually, uh, she notices that uh, Ishmael, uh, Hagar's son, is uh, poking fun at uh, her her son Isaac, um, and uh, she is. Uh, uh, plagued with jealousy uh, or, or you know she is outraged by by this and uh, she commands Abraham you must take this slave woman and her child and um, you know get them out of here um, th so he, this son Ishmael cannot inherit along with my son and so Abraham does the deed he takes the uh, servant woman uh, Hagar and her son and places them in the wilderness, give them a little bit some water uh, that would last them for some time. And um, uh, there Hagar uh, manages her plight in her own way and she is visited by an angel and so on. So that, but that's Hagar's story. Back mm -hmm. to Sarah. Uh, so, so it's interesting that you mentioned the laugh because the laugh is included in the Bible, but it's also how Sarah is referenced in the Quran, that laugh, right? Yes, yes. But there's an interesting variation. In the Quran, yes, uh, she laughs as well. And, and by the way, the name name Ishaq uh, in Arabic corresponds to Yitzchak in, in, in Hebrew and, and, and that verb means uh, he laughed okay. or, or he laughs. Yeah. So, um, so, so there's a pun, pun here or a play on the, on the idea that Sarah laughed and, and now the child is, you know, the child has a name that, that is reminiscent of the idea that Sarah uh, laughed when, when she got that news. But there's also, like when we think about the representation of uh, biblical figures in the Quran, the Quran has this ideal image of who the biblical heroes and prophets and, and uh, righteous persons are. And that ideal image is uh, now given to Muslims as uh, ideals to uh, represent in our own lives. So as some of 
of the uh, ways in which the uh, biblical characters may appear in the Bible uh, in, in, in a less than noble manner is not reproduced in the Quran. Mm -hmm. So for example, in the Bible, uh, it is said that Abraham asked Sarah, why did you laugh? And she was afraid. So she said, no, I didn't laugh. And Abraham contradicted her by saying, you did laugh. And that's the end of that uh, dialogue uh, where she's contradicted like this. But in the Quran, uh, she's not taking the to task for laughing and, uh, and, and she doesn't contradict him herself. She doesn't turn out to be lying. And there's also that jealous trope, right? You know, the jealous wife. And I, I believe from what I understand in the Quran, <clears throat> that doesn't feature very much. Yes, that in, in fact, it, does, it doesn't occur at all mm -hmm. because uh, in, in the Quran, um, uh, Hagar is also not mentioned by name. And um, it, from the Quranic perspective, it looks like this is normal. Abraham has a wife, a son, uh, Ishmael. Abraham has Sarah, um, uh, who's given the news of uh, Isaac to be born. And uh, th there is none of this uh, jealousy uh, that is mentioned. Uh, it, it, it's not mentioned in the Quran. And Sarah doesn't banish Hagar, I believe. It doesn't banish Hagar because uh, the banishment of Hagar doesn't look very good, doesn't uh, bring out a good character on the part of Sarah or even on the part of Abraham. <laughs> and, and, and one might say not even on the part of God for you know allowing it to happen in this way. Uh, but in the Quran, everybody looks good. God looks good. Abraham looks good. Sarah looks good. And uh, the, the, the moral lessons are there then registered very well for Muslims in, in the Quranic representation mm -hmm. of that story. Why do you think the Quran cares about making everyone look good? Well, uh, for, uh, a traditional Muslim interpretation would have said, okay, well, this is the uh, history, this is how it is, and the Quran is just telling us exactly the, the way it is. Uh, a, a more sophisticated uh, uh, understanding of this would be that uh, the Quran is being told uh, for the purpose of the moral lessons, and uh, the Quran does not need to mention things which are unsavory, uh, because that would count against the Quran's uh, objective and purpose. Uh, in, in bringing out the moral lessons from, from the story. Thank you for sharing with us, Dr. Shibir. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at Quranspeaks.com.